It was only supposed to be a three hour tour, but it turned into a trip of a lifetime. Let's catch up with the cast of Gilligan's Island, the legendary sitcom about seven castaways trying to survive a desert island, and each other, with Gilligan, the skipper too, a millionaire and his wife, a movie star, the professor, and Marianne here on Gilligan's Isle. So what did the seven castaways do after they got off the island? I'm your host, Nostalgic Nick, and together we're going to answer just that. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, and be sure to subscribe to Do You Remember and click the bell so you're alerted as soon as we post a new video. Okay, let's get scavenging. Bob Denver, Gilligan. Gilligan's Island would just be some island without its clumsy, bumbling, titular character. Bob Denver perfectly played the first mate of the SS Minnow. I'm sorry, I can't say it again, I'm chicken. <laughs> nicknamed Little Buddy, who made a habit of ruining everyone's best efforts to return to civilization. Bob got his big break in Hollywood with a starring role in The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis, in which he played the very first beatnik of American television, the legendary Maynard G. Krebs. The show was revolutionary at the time because no other program had teenagers as its leads. This break also provided a hurdle for Bob, however, when Gilligan creator Sherwood Schwartz wanted a more stumbling innocent type which Maynard wasn't. Thankfully, when the two met, Bob was able to prove his lovability and was awarded Gilligan. And Gilligan's Island would be the high point of his career. He tried to make a comeback in programs like The Good Guys and Dusty's Trail, but nothing really stuck. Later, he found his footing as a radio personality. Through it all, Denver and his wife Dreama tried to give back through their Denver Foundation, which gave funds to families with special needs. What an admirable legacy. Sadly, Denver passed away in 2005 from pneumonia. He was 70 years old. Rest in peace, little buddy. Alan Hale Jr., Captain. Who could forget the skipper? I mean, Gilligan was arguably the skipper's sidekick. This is one captain you didn't want to mess with. Gilligan, bananas don't have pits. Your head maybe, yes, but not bananas. But there was a soft side under his tough guy attitude. Alan actually came from acting royalty, being the son of character actor and frequent sidekick of Errol Flynn, the great Alan Hale Sr. Alan Hale Jr. began acting in 1933 and has a long list of notable credits before becoming shipwrecked. He was actually the title character on two shows, 1952's Biff Baker USA for a few seasons, then in 1957 he played the titular character on Casey Jones. But none of his early work could touch the fame that came with the skipper, and what an iconic role. Being typecasted is many actors' nightmare, but Hale totally embraced it. Series creator Sherwood Schwartz said that Hale would visit children in hospitals dressed as the skipper and fully in character. It doesn't get more wholesome than that. After Gilligan's Island, Hale continued with guest spots on TV shows like ALF and Simon and Simon, frequently as the skipper character. Hale also opened up a restaurant in LA called The Lobster Barrel. Unfortunately, its founder is no longer with us, having passed away in 1990 at the age of 68. But continuing his skipper through line, his ashes were sprinkled into the Pacific Ocean. Jim Backus, Thurston Howell III. One problem that even money can't solve? Getting stranded on an island. Thurston Howell III found that out the hard way. And why didn't I think of that? Throughout the 30s and 40s, you'd be more likely to hear Bacchus on the radio. That's where he developed his popularity. But his voice became even more famous in 1949 thanks to his role as Mr. Magoo. He couldn't know this at the time, but there were a few similarities between Magoo and Thurston. Both were painfully rich, but still got into mischief that their money couldn't fix. For Thurston, it was usually Gilligan's fault. For Magoo, being the most nearsighted human in history. Change your prescription, Mr. Magoo. Another early standout role was the 1952 situational comedy I Married Joan. And Bacchus didn't just do TV. He played James Dean's father in Rebel Without a Cause and was also part of an all-star cast in It's a Mad, 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 Mad World. Off the set and onto the green, Bacchus was an excellent golfer. Later in life, he also became an author where he co-wrote his autobiography with his wife. His final chapter concluded in 1989 when he passed away at 76 years old. Natalie Schaefer, Lovey Howe. 
Powell. Even before Gilligan's Island, Natalie was typecast as a beautiful sophisticate with a fancy background. Schaefer probably channeled her own love for the finer things, since she only agreed to do the Gilligan's pilot for the trip to Hawaii. Fittingly, she ended up marrying actor Louis Calhoun, who also got typecast a lot in old, rich, upper-class roles. The pair divorced nine years later, though. Life imitated art with Schaefer, because she actually had so much real estate investment, she raked in millions of dollars. Her wealth was less of a secret than her age, which she very stubbornly stayed vague about. Her contract stipulated no close-ups, because she was 13 years older than Jim Backus. When she died from liver cancer in 1991, she left all that money to Gilligan's Island co-star Dawn Wells to keep her dogs very well taken care of. I was like a surrogate daughter to her in the later years of her life because we did a lot of things together and, and um, she was just a joy. Tina Louise, Ginger. Tina began acting in 1955, and by 58, she won the Golden Globe for Most Promising Newcomer for her work in God's Little Acre. Tina was multi-talented, also releasing a 1957 album which paired her with legendary saxophonist Coleman Hawkins in It's Time for Tina. Just a year later, the stunning Tina Louise was named the world's most beautiful redhead by the National Art Council, and Ginger was definitely a favorite of the male audience. How was that? That wouldn't even satisfy your mother. After Gilligan's Island, you probably remember her from The Stepford Wives, as well as guest roles on many hit shows, including three episodes of Chips. And if you haven't seen our Chips cast then and now video, check it out after this. Tina took a bit of a break from her career in the 2000s, but now at 86 years old, she's back and completed a 2019 film alongside Stephen Baldwin, titled Tapestry. Russell Johnson, The Professor. High school science teacher Rory Hinckley known, better known as The Professor, Russell ended up with the role after the original actor, John Gabriel, came off as too young for the vast amount of knowledge and education the professor was supposed to have. Johnson soared to great heights early on, literally, as an aviation cadet with the U.S. Air Force. His duty brought him to the Pacific Theater of World War II, where he actually flew dozens of combat missions. Several injuries caused him to be honorably discharged, and when he returned home, the GI Bill set him up with the Actors Lab in Hollywood. Quickly making a name for himself, Johnson caught the interest of Gilligan's Island's producers. As part of the tryout, they wanted him to take his shirt off. Johnson refused, but he still got the role. His time on the show left such an impression on him that he titled his autobiography here on Gilligan's Isle. Johnson died in 2014 at the age of 89, but before his passing, he became famous as an advocate for HIV AIDS fundraising. Dawn Wells, Mary Ann. Definitely one of the few characters you want to be stranded on an island with, Ginger or Mary Ann was a joke thrown around by fans everywhere. Mary Ann was an excellent cook and always had great words of wisdom for the wayward islander. Everything about Mary Ann was good, wholesome, and encouraging. This former Miss Nevada originally wanted to become a ballerina, but it just wasn't in the cards. Seems it was fate, because Wells has had a fantastic career on the screen, and also on the stage. Her theater career really took off after Gilligan's Island. Supposedly, this became her main source of income. Wait, not Gilligan's Island? In a Forbes interview, Wells claimed someone on her spot along the totem pole got hardly any residuals, and her salary wasn't that great either, especially compared to Jim Backus and Tina Louise. But Wells still uses what she has to help others, just like Mary Ann would. Not only is she a teacher, but she also runs a clothing line for people with disabilities. The line is called Wishing Wells Collections, and at 82 years old, we certainly wish Dawn well too. It's sad and surreal to think most of the castaways are no longer with us. The fantastic, vibrant energy that they brought to Gilligan's Island helped make this show a part of television history. So tell us, who is your favorite character on Gilligan's Island? What's an episode of this show that you specifically remember? And why do you think it stuck with you? Let's talk in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you get alerts the next time we take a trip down memory lane. From all of us here at Do You Remember, thanks so much for watching.